Hello and welcome to the chapter 3 review over exponential functions and logarithmic functions. So let's start right off here with number 1. Decide if the function is an exponential function. If it is, state the value, state the initial value and the base. The way you know that it's an exponential function is if there's a number to the x power. It could be any letter, but most of the time we'll probably see x. Um, so it's a number to the x power, so yes, this is an exponential function. So times that we don't have an exponential function, the things I like to do is just reverse what we have, like x to the 8th, that is not an exponential function, okay? That's a polynomial. Um, or they could do, you know, something crazy like x to the x. Well, that's, that's not going to work. We have to have a number for the base and an x in the exponent. So... This one's a yes, and then we need to answer the other questions that go with it. The initial value is what we get if we plug in a zero where x is, and so if we do that, it makes this part go away, leaving us with just negative 8.8. .8. So I'm going to abbreviate that IV and say that that's negative 8.8. .8. Then the base is the base of the exponential part. So the base, which I'm going to label B, is 8. Compute the exact value of the function for the given x value without using calculator. Okay, so by the way, number one, great question to go on a non-calculator part of a test because you literally don't have anything to calculate there or really any reason to graph it. Number two says to do it without using a calculator. So again, that's a really, really strong possibility that this could end up on a no-calculator part of the test. We just want to put x where, I mean 4, where the x is. So 5 to the 1 minus 4... Well, 1 minus 4 is negative 3. 5 to negative 3, to get that to be a positive exponent, we move what we have down to the bottom. So that's 1 over 5 to the positive 3. And then 5 to the third power is 125, which gives us this right here as an answer. Graph the function. Describe its position relative to the graph of the indicated basic function. Now this will probably be on the calculator part, but if it wasn't, your best uh, approach would be to use a table of values to plug in some numbers and get some points. But if you look at this either on your calculator or with, uh, with points plotted, this plus 5 here is going to shift our graph up 5. Um, and so we just take the graph of what 3 to the x normally looks like. It normally has a point at 0, 1. So we move it up to... 0, 6, because we're adding 5 to all of our y values. Um, then normally at 1, we would get 3, so we need to go all the way up to 8. The important thing on exponential functions also is that we normally have, for 3 to the x, an asymptote at 0, so that's going to shift our asymptote up to 5, so we have an asymptote here that we don't want our graph to hit. So when we draw it to the left, we want to get close to that line but not cross it, do the best you can. And this way we want to keep going up forever. So it's not a perfect graph, but you get the gist. On number four, it says graph the function on your calculator and analyze it for all the things we're used to analyzing. So this is just a, this is just three to the x with a vertical stretch of four. Um, and it's not shifted in this case. So uh, it should just have a basic shape kind of like this ish. So the domain, well, we can plug in any number for x that we want, which means our domain is all reals or negative infinity to infinity. Our range, we're not able to get all of our y values. We can't get these negatives. In fact, we can't even get it to equal zero. So that means that our range is parentheses zero comma infinity. It is continuous on its domain. It is increasing on its domain. And either write out on its domain or put what the domain is. Just to make sure that you are being clear on what your answer is. Uh, symmetry, there is no symmetry, or at least not any kind that we care about for this. 
uh, it is bounded below because it's like there's a floor underneath our graph where we can't, we're never going to get values underneath that floor. So it's bounded below. There are no extrema because it doesn't ever switch from increasing, it's increasing the whole time. There is an, a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. And for our in behavior, remember that unless something weird is happening, we want to know the end behavior as x goes to negative infinity, and we also want to know when it's going towards positive infinity. So as it goes towards negative infinity, it's getting closer and closer to that asymptote, which is zero. As it goes towards positive infinity, it's getting closer and closer to positive infinity. So that should be everything we need. Okay, solve the equation algebraically. Now, there are a number of different ways of, of doing number five. I would say I like doing it a particular way, and you may find it easier to do it a different way. If this was on a no calculator part, well, this would be tough because 512, you may not realize, is 8 to the third power, but it is. We can rewrite 8. We can rewrite 512 as 8 to the third power, which just puts that x next to the 3 in the exponent. It equals 8 to the first, which means we can set the exponents equal to each other and solve. So if this is a no, no calculator kind of question, you'd hope for a smaller number or something. We could also, if we wanted to, we could have gone all the way to 2's. 512 is a power of 2, so we could have written it as 2 to some power equals 2 to the third and, and gotten ex our exponents to equal each other that way. If you have your calculator for this one, you can write this as log of 512 of 8 equals x, and you could plug that into your calculator. You'd get 0 0.3 repeating, and then you would want to, you know, say what that actually is as a fraction. Now 6, this one is not, is not supposed to be actually as hard uh, to see how 1 over 16 can be written as 2 to some power. Think about it, 1 over 16, 16 is 2 to the 4th power. If you don't know that off the top of your head, think about it. How many times do you have to multiply 2 together to get 16? 1 over 2 to the 4th power we can rewrite as 2 to the negative 4th. Okay, so that's what we're going to put right here is 2 to the negative 4th. Now we can set the exponents equal to each other. then solve it like a normal equation like it is. Divide by negative 3. So x equals 3.